Now when you go to create your blog over at blogger.com, you simply need to follow their directions and fill out the forms. And all kinds of people make blogs of all kinds of skill levels, so they make the form pretty easy to follow. You don't have to be a tech expert to do this. First, you need to create a username and a, uh, an account over at Blogger. Now, if you already have a Google account, like a Gmail account, you should be able to log in using that same information because Google owns Blogger. But if you haven't, this would be a good place to start. So you have to create a username, and of course your username, like everything else, must be unique. No two people can have the same username. And you have to create a password and type it twice. Then what name do you want to display at your blog? You can use, uh, use your normal name here, and that's fine. And there's options later, so you can keep that from showing up. And put in your username uh, once, and then twice, and then put a display name and you can use your name here. And then you put in your email address and you can use your school email address that would be fine. Uh, read and accept the terms of service and then you click continue. Now you're going to get to some specifics about your blog itself. You need to give your blog a title and give your blog title something specific at least as specific as you can to the topic that the blog is about. So if your blog is for some CIS material for a class, then go ahead and call it that. You know, whatever the class is, a uh, journal or something like that. If the blog is personal in nature, then you could give it a give it a different name. Um, and you can put spaces in your blog title. You can put multiple words. So you can be. This is going to be the displayed name for your blog when somebody goes there. Now you have to be a little bit more particular when you get to the blog address part. Your blog address shouldn't have any spaces in it at all because it's part of a web address. So HTTP colon slash slash whatever you want to call it dot blogspot dot com will be the URL for your blog and that's an important one. So give your blog a URL. You try to do something similar if not the same to your blog title or some variation of it. So your blog title could be called CIS 178 Journal. But then for your blog address, you might call it uh, CIS-178 Journal. However, no two people can, can have the same exact URL, so you might have to do some variation. Maybe your initials and then the name of the class or something like that. Um, I'm also a big fan, even though it doesn't show it here, I'm a big fan of using all lowercase letters in web addresses, URLs. Of course, then we have a CAPTCHA device. You type what you see, and then you continue on. Then you choose a template that you like. That part's pretty easy. And then your blog is created. Next thing is to start posting. And you come to this posting screen where you can type in the title of a post. Remember, a post is an individual entry on a blog. And a blog is made up of many entries or posts. And those are displayed in reverse chronological order, the most recent being near the top. So you put in your title, and you put in some text, and then you can publish your post. Now once you've done that, you can go to the dashboard. Now the dashboard is the overall blogger interface where you can kind of look over all of your blogs, assuming you have more than one. In fact, even if you only have one. So in this dashboard, the one blog is displayed, and people can have dozens of blogs on a whole variety of topics. So you can always go back into that blog and work with the settings and make new posts. Now back in the posting screen, um, the toolbar is pretty easy you know, to, to get used to. There's normal font controls like bold and italics. And of course over here to the right you've got the controls for um, doing a spell check and inserting an image into your blog post. Notice we're in compose mode. If we went into edit HTML mode and you're familiar with HTML code, you even have a, even more control over the way that your blog posts work and that's been successful and published and here's the blog how it looks on the web so you definitely need to keep track of some things you want to know what your blog URL is and the best way to know that is to go to your blog on the web kinda of like here and then look up in the address bar and confirm what that blog address is if you need to share your blog with other people this is the web address that you will be sharing with them you won't share with them necessarily your blogger.com username or your password. You simply need to share the web address or URL so other people, like me, can go to your blog and check it out. 